Welcome, welcome, and welcome back, Jackie. How are you today? I'm good, Rick. How you doing? Doing pretty good. It looked like it was a really slow real estate weekend out there. Um, so I kind of wanted to run through some numbers uh, today and uh, talk about um, why millennials are giving up. We have that little headline here, and it you know you and it really goes into a lot of details about the housing affordability. It's out of reach. But really, I think the key to this is, I think we have to understand for a lot of people in that age group, you know, their, their prime years of getting ready to buy real estate was and getting out of college was right when the economy collapsed here after the 2008 thing. So they've, it's kind of like, sir, may I have another? I mean, they're getting punched from the right and the left. Um, many of them are doing really well in buying homes, but the ones that weren't able to right now, I don't know. I think they're throwing their hands up. What do you think? Well, I think it's sad because in 2019, I had a gazillion. I mean, okay, that's an exaggeration, but I had a ton of buyers that were in that process of getting ready and, you know, just kind of tweaking their credit, doing the savings, um, getting, you know, starting conversations with the lenders, getting set up on searches, and then COVID hits. And of course, we all know what happened with COVID hit. And then, um, you know, there, the, I, it breaks my heart because in all my years of doing this, my most enjoyable times are helping first time home buyers. And, and that's the, the category they fit, you know, buying their first home. And it's, it's such, an incredible feeling when I get to hand the keys to a first time home buyer and they're part of the American dream. Yeah. And well, so they can't, can't get your break right now. Can they? <laughs> no, they haven't caught a break in three years, almost four years now, you know, it's like COVID hit and the investors just swarmed our market. And, you know, I had quite a few buyers that, you know, we submitted God, some of them up to 20, 25 different offers on properties and just consistently got beat out by investors. I mean, they just, you know, they, and they could only do so much. I mean, some of them were still coming in over, you know, maybe five or 10,000, but you had investors coming in at 50,000 over call cash offers. I mean, they just had no chance. And then they thought, okay, we're going to regroup. And then when the investors left the market, of course, as we all know, the interest rates went out of, out of control. And now we're at the worst affordability we've ever been at in the history. Yeah, we're seeing that. And it's, it's a uh, fact, there's a chart here that shows um, national single family. Well, here's, here's nationally what's happening with listings. So, you know, we're up here in this little circle area right here. These are new listings, not active listings. So just like what I track on my seven day moving average, but this is the U S consumer sentiment index. So we're down here at 69. 0.5 certainly not at a record low but it was down here well that's um, when this, interest rates first jacked up and it was the shock of right when it, but then people kind of recovered from it because there was a lot of builder incentives so anyway people aren't really jazzed about the housing market right now but here's the u.s home prices and household income as an index and that's way up there and that's in 2022 once 1.69 one down here is considered balanced affordability so so people are getting hit on top the head but if we look at our market here jackie this is from this morning new listing counts have been extremely low and i'll show you where we're at today often more than 40 percent below the same period in 2022 so the extra new listings are coming just as demand takes another leg down which means the active listing pool is getting more input and less output. They like to describe it as a swimming pool. You're filling it with water and water's draining out. So there's a little bit more water coming in now and, and not as much draining out. You would therefore expect the active listing count to grow and you would be correct for all areas and all types. We saw 13,901 active listings without a contract and that was up from the week before. With monthly and annual sales counts dropping, inventory measures such as months supply and days of inventory are increasing, though they are still below normal. The competition among sellers is growing, and the buyers that remain have more choice. The market's softer during the second and third quarters, 
with upward pressure on prices dissipating. In other words, uh, you, you can't price up now. You just can't. Mm -mm. Um, and the listings have gone up slightly, um, I guess. If I look at our seven-day moving average this morning, there's new listings were, were popping up last week, and they've, mm -hmm. they've come down on the average for the past And that does days. happen in October, though. I, I see that every year where we do get another little inflow of listings, and it's kind of that last surge of people that want to move before the holidays. And well, both so, these numbers are going to, I mean, I think they're going to go down, don't you? November, December, both of them, both new listings and contracts. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we see a lot of canceled too, as we get closer to the holidays, people just don't want to have their house on the market. However, I've always told, and I've got quite a few new listings coming up and we've got quite a few that we've recently taken. And, it, you know, if you're thinking about selling, it really is a good time because a lot of people will start to pull those off the market for the holidays. Because sometimes they just come on and test the waters a little bit. Um, but, you know, I tell my sellers, if people are looking and they're coming through your house in November and December, they're serious buyers. Yeah, the ones that are looking in November, December, they're, they have to move. Right. Um, so they're, 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 they're loaded and ready to go. It's a job transfer or whatever, but they're still... Look, buyers know where the where the market is right now. Not all the sellers do. No, no. So uh, they need right to be now, educated. Yeah, I mean, don't you think right now that sellers need to understand that, you know, we're down 1% for the month and it's trending that way? It's not falling off a cliff, right. but when you said it right, you're t testing the market. You don't want to do that in this environment. Mm -mm. You're going to want to have not. a price... So let's say there's a house down the street from yours and it, and it sold for $500,000. Well, that contract was written 45 days ago. So you're going to have to be 500,000. I'm assuming they're both apples to apples, right? Mm -hmm. So now you're going to have to say, okay, it sold for 500,000. That was two months ago. I got to be 2% lower just to be right. on even keel. But right. sellers don't do that. Well, they got 500. Oh, okay. I'm going in 510. Yeah, that party's exactly. over. And here's the thing, the homes are still selling if they're in good shape and they are priced appropriately. And I'm still seeing, and I tell my sellers, the last thing you ever want to do is age a listing in this market, in a market like this, especially when we're shifting and we're building our inventory some, because all it's going to do, it's going to end up costing you more money in the long run. And so if you price right at market or just slightly below I tell my sellers all the time, you don't need to worry about leaving money on the table because the market will come to you and it's still happening to where we're still seeing some contracts over list price, but those are properties that are priced maybe one or 2% below where they should have been. Well, a lot of people are wrapping, they're around selling quick. Arm, they're wrapping their arms around that equity that they have now, the paper equity. So right. let's say that they, they only owe, oh, 190,000 on it. And it's, it's worth 450. Okay. So they're taking 450 minus 190 minus fees, and that's what they want. And, right. and so that's where they price. And, but they get attached to that number. In other words, I'm going to walk home with a hunt with $235,000. Right. I just made that up. Well, even if you end up giving a, a proposal that says they're going to walk home with 230, they view that as an insult. Right. But they never had that money in the first place. And that's, that's what they don't understand. To, you need to understand that entire batch of money that you got to work with. It's very positive. If, if you're holding out for that $5,000, you could be walking away from $200,000. Right. And it could cost you more money in the long run. Too many times I see people get stuck. We have a listing out in Maricopa. We received two offers on it. They were about 5,000 off what they wanted. Now, they were still making a great return considering they had bought the house in 2022. And we all know what happened in 2022. I mean, we went backwards, but then we gained it all back in the spring of 2023. And they've got, they're able to cover their closing costs and still put some decent cash in their pocket. They rejected both those offers because they were 5,000 off what they wanted. And now here we sit three weeks later without any other offers. And I always tell clients, the first offer you get is typically the best you're going to get. Yeah. Because yeah. And 
Sometimes people listen, sometimes they don't. <laughs> yeah, well, you have to you have to juggle all these personalities. Here's the other interesting thing now, Jackie, too, that I'm seeing that is this is seller concessions by price range. As a seller, right now, look at this price range of three hundred to four hundred thousand. Fifty eight percent of the transactions there were seven hundred sixty five transactions. Fifty eight percent of them had to contributed towards closing costs with an average of $8,700. So if you're listing, um, you need to know that up front. Right. 50 right. You get half of them from 400 to 500,000 with a median concession that's higher of $9,000. Now, there was a lot of rate buy downs being offered, but right now rate buy downs are so expensive that yeah. you're better off getting concessions that help you with your closing costs. Because, you know, sellers are not going to be able to cough up enough money to really buy that rate down from 7.8 to anything even resembling attractive. Um, no. And if you use that extra money to make additional payments for the first couple of years, the money that you're saving with the concessions, then it's going to help you actually more in the long run. And then, you know, eventually, I, I mean, I hate that whole statement, you know, date the house or whatever. Date yeah, the rate. Marry the house, date the rate. yeah, whatever that is. I can't stand that statement because it's so false because none of us can predict when they're going to come down, but they will come down eventually. So you just have to be really wise on how you use those concessions. Yeah. So I think, you know, for, for buyers right now, you know, it's tough. You can't, you know, the rates aren't where you want them. Um, the availability is not there. You literally, if you're priced out, you're priced out. You're going to have to either wait or you're going to have to move. Right. Um, some people are choosing to move, you know, Phoenix is expensive. So they're leave, you know, they're not going to San Diego, but, uh, you know, they may be going to, you know, Albuquerque or, right. or Oklahoma, um, Texas, <laughs> uh, parts of Texas are affordable, but you couldn't drag me to Texas. No uh, way. My sister just moved there a couple of years ago. She loves it. Yeah. It's, it's their taxes are they They vary by city and they're really really expensive. But so if, if I'm a millennial and I have bought and I'm sitting, I have no choice, but to, but to wait, but I would still pay off my credit cards. Get I'd yourself in a position. Get, yeah. Get yourself ready because it, it's not going to change overnight, but look, rent's not going down. We're not seeing no. it going down. And in fact, what we're seeing is with, um, many first time home buyers being priced out, they're going all in for rent. So they're actually right. boosting rent prices. Right. And, and they the, know the, there's this many people that can't buy. So, but they want to rent. So let's, let's make these apartments more attractive now, you know, better pool, right. better clubhouse. And Yeah. And the sad thing is, is, <clears throat> excuse me, the first time home buyers that have been waiting it's like now suddenly they're depleting their savings. They're at the lowest level they've been. They're yeah. racking up credit card again because they're just completely giving up hope. And I find that so sad because if you continue, you know, you look back and in 2019, before the whole COVID thing, we saw all this stuff over the internet, a nation full of renters. And that's exactly what's starting to happen. And I find it so incredibly sad because the one way to generational wealth is through real estate. And if you're going to buy a home and you're going to stay in there for 10 years, at least even five years, at least you're always going to be okay. If you rent, you're never going to see that money again. You're just throwing it away. And there's so many benefits to home ownership. And so if you are priced out of the market, I get that, but don't eliminate yourself from the market permanently by just giving up hope because that's, you know, somebody made a comment on our live stream this morning and said, yeah, but when you own a home, you got taxes and taxes go up. And I said, well, what happens to the raise in taxes to your landlord? And Dan goes, he raises the rent. Right. And he said, actually, my taxes went down. He lives in Illinois. Surprise, surprise. Um, but. Um, and our taxes I'm, here aren't bad. So. No, no. And, the way, and our taxes can't get jacked up suddenly to the point to, you know, it, it makes it somebody it unaffordable for somebody that already owns a home that we, I think we did a video on that not too long ago. Yeah. Yeah. Washington state. I know it's, it's, I've got a lot of friends up there that just got hammered when they got their tax bill this year. Uh, unfortunately for us, that's, that's not happening, but then there's chatter 
you know, wait because investors, now that rates are higher, investors are going to have to dump their rentals. Um, I'm waiting for it. I don't see it. Mm -mm. And I have a lot of investors I sold rentals to. I have not had one. I have one Airbnb guy that is selling his and we're in escrow and we got multiple offers on it. But the only reason he's selling it is to move all his, his investments to the same state. Not well, one other investor. For them to flood the market either. I don't. No, I, no. I see the number coming down because it, it will. If, if tourism starts to abate, then of course the number of, you know, bookings they're going to have is going to come down. Are they, are they going to bail? Um, and investors, if they bought and they've got a low interest rate and they're, they got a 10% return um, monthly, you know, 10% positive cash flow. Um, why would they sell? Because they're going to get 5% in the CD. The stock market's mm -hmm. not doing well. So, um, you know, it, there has to be some big catalyst to make investors go, I'm out. And we, we got hammered here with way too much investor purchasing. So, yeah. You know, the market, the market got killed and it's, it's, it's sad. So I think, uh, well, uh, Rick, real quick, staying on that thought there real quick. So even when we had the crash and I was working back then with big Canadian funds, 10, $20 million funds, buying, buy and holds. Now, some of those investors did sell those pools of houses. They were buying three, four, 500 houses. I mean, we were sometimes buying five and 10 houses a day at the courtyard steps. At that time, we could buy a 2,500 square foot house in Buckeye for $65,000, less than the cost to build it. I have not seen any of those investors singly sell those houses off. If they do sell them, they sell them to other investment firms in batches, like 40, 50 houses at a time. And those other investment firms turn them into rentals. Sorry. I have not seen not one single of and I'm talking, I must have sold $40 million worth of houses. I have not seen those come to the market as single listings in all this time. Well, today so, we're coming down uh, one to one to one and a half percent per month um, from August. So going into the first of the year, I don't see any of that changing. Um, that's not enough to launch affordability. Um, we can see that interest rates look like they're going to stay. They are going to stay higher for longer because there's a, there are too many bonds and there's a shortage of buyers. So it's mm -hmm. like anything else. Like, you know, you're, you, there's not enough houses. So the price of houses have gone up, even though, I mean, if you look at how low our sales are and how high rates are right now, and we're only down 1.1%, that tells you the disparity between the two right there. Right. Uh, we, we should be just falling, falling fast, but we've only got 13,000 homes. Yeah. Um, and I am waiting to see if that's going to change at the rate. Are, are you seeing this? It looks like we're adding three to 400 homes to the listing pool a week mm -hmm. because of lower sales. So that won't even put us at, well, at 400 a week, it could put us at 20,000 by the end of january right when this uh, spring season starts if there's going to be a spring season well and what did we think last year nobody anticipated what happened in the beginning of 2023 nobody yeah. thought we were going to be as busy as we were and what yeah. happened was all of the all of the loss that we had which wasn't tremendous what did we come down 12 percent around there max in certain areas we made it all back up and then some. So yeah. So I don't know where to predict uh, the spring market or rate. So what we're going to do is just keep letting everybody know where we're at. Millennials, don't give up. I don't blame you. You've been beat up, sir. May I have another? But uh, stay tuned, and we'll keep walking you through the numbers. And if there's opportunities out there, we will certainly let you know. If you're a seller, um, don't despair. Homes are still moving. They're just not moving as fast as you'd like for the dollar amount that you probably would like to get, but it it's uh, we've certainly seen despair before and I'm not seeing any of that now. So Jackie, I will check back with you. You have a super day and uh, talk to you soon. Thanks Rick. Bye guys. Bye.